Here's my experience with BYU. Now, I didn't go to BYU. Christine did. She actually graduated with a bachelor's in sociology. But um, I wouldn't touch BYU when I first went shopping for schools with a 10-foot pole because I didn't want to have to deal with its conduct code. BYU has a conduct code that you are required to sign um, stating that you won't do anything like smoke or drink. You won't be caught doing um, drugs or uh, having inappropriate sexual relations with people that you shouldn't be having them with. Not only do you have to sign this if you attend BYU as a student, but faculty have to sign this as well. So BYU does have faculty that aren't Mormon, but in order for them to work for BYU, they have to sign the conduct code, which means they can't have their cup of joe in the morning, and they can't be caught smoking or doing anything that the church deems as um, inappropriate. So, Anyway, I didn't have any plans on going to BYU. I ended up going to a, a two-year college to start out with in, in central Utah called Snow College, and it was a, a really good experience. I started out going into uh, botany, forestry, and then I took a geology class from Renee Mosh, and uh, she she got me hooked on geology, so I ended up going and getting my geology, or I got an associate's in, in science and geology there. But one of the summers that I was there, Renee was able to hook up with a paleontologist at BYU, and he had a he had plans for taking a crew out to Dry Mesa, Colorado to work at a paleontological site digging for dinosaur bones. And she heard about this and she gave him my name and they we were able to arrange um, I got paid to go do this for a summer. It was what maybe only about two months but oh my gosh it was it was incredible. Now the the caveat for them hiring me to go uh, dig dinosaur bones for them was that I would transfer to BYU and while I had some reservations I thought my gosh this is my chance to to do paleontology I thought this would be awesome I loved dinosaurs from the time I was knee-high to a grasshopper so this this was I, I, I was I would have sold my soul to go do this basically and it was a great experience um, I was the only girl on the on the crew, so I got my own tent, and they provided the tent, they provided the food. I did a lot of cooking. Um, I did a lot of the cooking because I could cook, and I liked to cook, and I didn't want to eat what the other people were cooking, so I ended up becoming the, the chef as well. Um, but it was an incredible experience. We found all kinds of dinosaur bones, everything from uh, raptor toe claws to little toe bones to little tiny uh, pterosaur flying bird bones they're really small and really delicate and fragile to big huge I took out a uh, an allosaurus sacrum the sacrum is the lower part of your spine where the the vertebrae are fused together right around your pelvic region and it was it was so much fun learning all of these different the different bones and learning how to identify what you were what you were finding and the whole process of getting them out of the ground and transporting them back I've got lots of stories that I could share about that but um, the crew wasn't that big so I got a lot of opportunity to to sit and visit with the instructors or the 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 crew that um, worked for BYU the the adults basically Ken Stottman was the the uh, site supervisor, and then right under him uh, was D. Hall. And D. and I became best of buds. And Ken, he was he was a good guy. Um, and as the uh, summer finished up, he started talking about um, a site in Utah that he wanted to go and investigate further because there were. Um, there was some, uh, it looked like a promising site for finding another Allosaurus, maybe a complete one. The bones that we were digging up were all disarticulated and they weren't together in any way, shape, or form. It looked like they had um, 
been washed down a river and had accumulated in a location. But he was hoping to find a complete dinosaur at this other location in Utah. And I spoke up and I said, hey, if you need an assistant to go with you, I would love to go with you. Now, as I look back on this, I, I'm surprised he took me up on it because a single guy, he was divorced, and a young female, hmm, if, if BYU had heard about that, I don't know what would have happened to him. Apparently they never did. He's still working there, or he was the last I heard. But anyway, I thought, cool, I, can, I could extend the summer out and get a little more experience. Well, when I was... And that, that turned out okay. That was We were out for maybe three or four days, and it didn't pan out, unfortunately. The area where they had found the bones, the, the, um, it, it was just a tail piece, and it, didn't, it was articulated, but it was just a tail. <laughs> there was no, no other part of the dinosaur there, unfortunately. So he drove me home after this, um, this experience with him, and... While we were driving home, he started up a conversation telling me about a friend who had a child who was born intersexed. Although Ken didn't say intersexed, he called the child a hermaphrodite. And it's like he asked me if I'd ever heard of of um, children being born with uh, inter or being born to intersex or as a hermaphrodite. And it's like, yeah, I've I've heard of such thing. I I don't know anybody myself, and he's all well. That's why I was. That's why I was asking you, was because I was. I was wondering if that was the case for you, and this floored me, because I had never thought of myself as intersexed. I always considered. I knew that I felt like a, a guy inside, but I never had had anybody accuse me of being intersex before. Not not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just it was just so out of the blue and to have it coming from him it really wigged me out I I reassured him or I, I I told him as far as I know I am not intersexed yeah I like to do guy things but and I and I look and I act and I sound like a guy which is why he's pick why he picked up on on this and it began him wondering if I was intersex because I don't act like a girl I don't sound like a girl my voice has been deeper my whole my whole life and I am not girly in any way shape or form and he picked up on this and assumed that it must be an intersex condition because he had no other explanation for it but for me that wigged me out it wigged me out so bad that it pushed me back into the closet full force I mean not that I was out of the closet but I was bound and determined not to let on to anybody that I was attracted to women and that I felt like a guy inside I mean at that time I didn't know or understand fully that you could transition and and become the person you're you're supposed to be but it wigged me out because here I am and I'm supposed to be uh, preparing to go to BYU after I graduated from snow and if he's questioning me what kind of grief am I going to get from the morality patrol at BYU if they start picking up on me, my otherness, you know? So I ended up not going to BYU as a result of that. In fact, I was married within, a, within the year. So anyway, I just wanted to share that experience and give you a flavor for what BYU is, is like. Take care, and I'll be making my 12th week on testosterone this this coming week.